Well, good morning, friends. Welcome to church today. It's so nice to have you here with us. My name is Brad, and I've got the privilege of serving as the lead, cam- or as the lead campus pastor. I serve church in that, that way, and so I want to thank you for being with us today. However you are with us, we're so grateful that God has allowed us to continue to find ways to be together in community and, and together in this season. Be it online, if you're joining us online, thank you so much for being here. Or if you're joining us in person, we're so grateful that, that we have all of these different venues and opportunities and ways for us as a church to gather together. And thank, thankful that God continues to, to unite us together as a church in, in, these, in these ways and in these seasons, that, that we still continue to be family together, even though we may be a little bit distant. But before we, we move on in our service, I do want to just share a couple of announcements about church life and things that are happening here at Cornerstone Church Airdrie with you, some things that you might want to be aware of. Um, first, with our Cornerstone kids at home, um, August brings a new month, and so for this month, we, we've got a new focus and a theme for our Cornerstone kids at home. All of our Cornerstone kids' resources are all available on our website. If you just go to Cornerstone Foursquare Church and click on Airdrie, and then if you just click on, on the main page there, there'll be an icon that looks just like that, and you can click there. And we've got videos for, for all of our different age groups for our minis nursery, so that's zero to four years old, our littles class, which is four to grade one and our bigs class which is grade two to grade five we've got videos for all of those and other resources for parents as well but this this month our focus is on the incredible power of god as seen through creation and so each week for the next five weeks there's going to be videos for each of the kids that will teach them all about how they can understand a better picture of god's indescribable power and so that's available on our website for you and i can't encourage you enough to to watch those with your kids the next announcement is on Saturday. We're doing a guy's hike. And so if you would like to be a part of that, because of, of social distancing and, and all of that, we're not going to formally arrange any kind of carpooling um, because we don't want to ask people to do something they're uncomfortable with. If you want to carpool with somebody, reach out to them. And I'm sure you can drive together if you'd like to do that. But we're not going to be doing that. But we're going to meet at 1030 at the trailhead of the Powder Face Ridge. And so you can find all the details on all of that on our website. You can click and there's a little pin drop and it'll show you exactly exactly how to get where we're going. It's about a three-hour hike. Um, It's about six kilometers or so. It's about 500, I think, elevation gain. So it's not a simple hike, but it's not a terribly difficult hike either. And so if you'd like to be a part of that, you are welcome to come and and hang out for for an afternoon, or well, a morning-ish, I guess, together. Maybe pack some food for a lunch. We'll eat at the top or something. But if you'd like to be a part of that, that's next Saturday at 10.30 in the morning. You can find all the directions on how to get where we're going there. The next announcement that I want to want to let you know is that just breezed through all of them there um, is that Cornerstone Church is hiring. We are looking for someone to be a temporary office administrator. And so the position is it starts at, at the beginning of next month, September, and it runs for eight weeks at 30 hours a week at $15 an hour. And you need to be between 18 and 30 to um, apply. The reason for all of those is that it's through a government program, a government subsidy program. So we're not creating all of these restrictions, but it's, it's the Canada summer jobs thing. And so we've been approved for that. And so if you'd like to do that, you can, you can send an email to office at Cornerstone Foursquare Church and just express interest if you'd like. You don't need to necessarily send in a resume and, and all of those, although if you do, it probably wouldn't hurt. Um, but if you'd like to, like to do that, you'd be welcome to you'd be working out of our Calgary office. And so you, if you'd like to, to connect with our church in that way, if you're looking for a part-time job or, or, or a seasonal job or whatever, you, you can certainly connect to us in that way. The next announcement that I want to want to let you know is that our PowerPoint thing just does not seem to be working today, um, is our, our family moments. What these are is we're looking for people inside the church who are willing, who are able to... Um, just record a short video of you and your family saying hi to everybody, saying, saying hi, you know, hi, Cornerstone family. Let us know what's going on new in your life and, and all of those kind of things. And we're compiling them all together. We've got a couple of them, and we're compiling them all together just so we can, can say hi to each other. That I know for many of us, it's been months since we've seen each other. 
is, is we've, been, we've been in social isolation at home, and, and our church has continued to meet together, but we haven't necessarily been able to see each other. And, and so if you would just take a short, no more than 30 seconds, don't make it longer than 30 seconds, but just a short video clip saying hi to everybody, and we'll make sure to, to pass that along through our congregation so that everybody can just see each other and hear each other's voices and, and all that and just reconnect with each other. The last announcement that I want to share with you is, is in the month of August, we, we are believing for the Lord to speak to our church through, through prophetic encouragement, that, that we're looking for, for God to be speaking to our church and with, with specific prophetic encouragement. And so if, if you believe that, that as you're going through your week, your day, whatever, that the Lord has spoken to you, and, and a word for our church, a prophetic encouragement for our church, let me know, and, and I'll make sure to, to send it out as best as I can. The easiest way for you to keep in touch with everything that's going on with that is through our social media channels or our Facebook and our Instagram and our Twitter, and we'll try to have everything out there as much as we can, and figuring out how to do it through the website and how to do it here in person and all of that. But over the month of August, you'll see these messages just kind of pop up through through all that we're doing, and and you're going to be able to discover what God is saying to our church. And on on, on uh, Friday, whatever the first was, the, yesterday, yesterday, so it was Saturday, the first was Saturday, um, we were able to share our first prophetic message that somebody had given to the church about being being brave and, and being strong in, in this season. And so you're able to, to find that on our Facebook page. All right. Well, this is really difficult. Um, why don't we pray, and, and then we will, we will just invite the Lord to come and speak to us, and then we'll continue to, to move through our service together. So let's pray together. Father God, I thank you for this time and, and this place. God, I thank you that, that you are the one who unites us together. You are the one who builds your church. You are the one who brings all things together. And God, we just pray now as we enter into a time of worship and then a time of hearing from your word, God, that you will have so much for us. God, we're so grateful for that. God, help us today to be good receivers. Help us today to be, to be good soil. Help us today to be good at receiving from you today. God, we know that you want to speak to us. God, we know that you want to work in us and through us. God, we know that you want to do so much in our lives today. And so God, help us not to miss out on what you're doing, but help us to be good ground. Help us to be good receivers. Help us to see everything that you have for us today. God, we love you, and we're so excited for all that you're going to do in us and through us. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Um, yeah, again, I want to encourage you to take whatever posture you're comfortable with um, that you are in the space and to, to embrace what is the, the weirdness of the times to worship maybe in different ways than you have before, uh, whether in prayers or having music play while, you, while scripture comes to mind and you spend some time reading that, uh, whether you're at home or here. Um, yeah, worship doesn't have to look one way, and we're learning that a lot <laughs> in this season. Um, and so, uh, with that, we wanna we wanna start and just take a moment of silence um, and and pray for listening. So, as we enter into August and this month of encountering the Lord, we're gonna need space to listen. <laughs> uh, and so, let's let's take that just for a moment right now.
separate Even if I ran away Your love never fails I know I still make mistakes But you have new mercies for me every day Your love never fails I don't have to 
I've heard. I 
How great. 
All things have passed. And all things have passed away. Your love has stayed the same. Your constant grace remains the cornerstone. Things that we thought. Stop. 
Now speak to your hearts. And Jesus, come speak to your hearts. We want to hear the voice of the one we love. And all of the noise of the one we want to hear. Over the crashing waves and the wind. Your voice cut through. Let your voice cut through. made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side. 
while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone, and the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it is I. Don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said. Why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly you are the Son of God. Well, good morning. It has uh, it's been a while for me since I've been up here uh, to speak. And uh, the, the wall sits I did this morning are not helping the jello legs at all. That's, so if you see the legs shake, that's... Partly wall sits, partly nervous. That's just the way it goes. Uh, if I can hide behind my guitar, I'm okay. If I'm, there's no guitar, the pulpit's not quite the same. Um, but if there's no guitar, I get a little, little bit no, more nervous than, than normal. So bear with that, but we'll, we'll, we'll get through this together. Um, so this morning, before we get to the encounter with Jesus, as you saw, it was, it was Jesus walking on the water. Um, we're going to take a look a little bit of what, what led up to this point um, in Matthew chapter 14. Um, context is something that is extremely important uh, when you read the Bible, as well as especially in the Gospels, because often the Gospel writers will kind of sandwich stories together in order to make a, a larger point than each individual story kind of makes. Um, so if we look back to the beginning of Matthew chapter 14, we can see the events of John the Baptist, uh, his death at the hands of Herod, um, and Jesus learning about that event. Um, so John was Jesus' cousin uh, and was the one prophesied to come before and prepare the way. So Jesus had a more than just, oh, this guy died sort of a relationship with, with John. It was it was it hit him very deep. Um, and so when, when, John, when Jesus heard of John's death, he decided that he would take him and his disciples, because conceivably it, it shook them too. Um, but he, he would take them out into kind of a wilderness area. They'd, they'd have a little bit of a time to, to pray together and to process and, and do all of that. Um, but then there was a whole bunch of people that found out where they were going. And so they decided to, uh, to tag along for their little, their, their powwow. Um, and it would have been easy in that moment for Jesus to turn the crowd away, to say, no, no, we need, we need this time. We're, we need to process. We need to, to deal with this. Um, it would have been so easy for him to just say, you guys need to, to go home. That's, that's okay. Uh, but Jesus, in verse 14 of Matthew 14, it tells us that he had compassion on them. Um, and so Jesus took time to heal them. He took time to, to pray for them, to, to be with these people, even though there was 
a pretty raw thing that had just happened in his life. Um, and when you're off in a desolate place without planning for it, food's a little hard to come by. It wasn't like these people were like, oh, Jesus is out going on a camping trip. Let's, let's pack up some food. Let's you know, bring, bring the coolers, bring the, the smokies. We'll, we'll have some fire, um, and, and we'll have a good time. No, they heard Jesus was going, and they were like, all right, let's go. Even though we have no idea where we're going to end up, we're just going to go. It was really more of a spur-of-the-moment thing. You know, there wasn't really a McDonald's on the way along the shore of the Sea of Galilee. They couldn't just you know, pick up some fast food and, and carry on. Um, you know, we could talk about Jesus feeding the 5,000, that miracle, uh, for quite some time. But that's not where we're going to focus today. Um, we're just talking to give some context to understand where we're headed. Um, but needless to say, at the end of that story, everyone has a full belly, and they're very impressed. Uh, so much so that in John's recounting of the story, he tells us that... Um, We'll go here. Ah, so when the people saw the sign that he had done, they said, this indeed is the prophet who had come into the world. Pers Whoa. This thing is not working. All right. Perceiving that they were about to come and take him by force and make him king, Jesus withdrew himself, or drew, withdrew again to the mountain by himself. So Jesus feeds these people, and they're like, yeah, awesome. Let's make him king. Jesus is like, whoa, that's not what we're going for here right now. So we can see from the context of John, his telling of the story, that the people were pretty riled up on, on making him king. They were, they were zealous to make him king. Um, and so this will bring us to verse 22 in Matthew 14. Uh, and so it says, Immediately he made the disciples get into the boat and go before him while he dismissed the crowds. So it's interesting to me that... Jesus first sends away the disciples before sending away the crowds. Um, we can kind of gather from some, some other bits and pieces of stories that some of the disciples were pretty convinced in Jesus' earthly kingdom versus his heavenly kingdom, and that they were like, probably, let's get on board with the crowd that wants to make him king, and let's, we're going to lead this charge, and Jesus is like, hold on, guys. You go first. <laughs> and then, then he starts to dismiss the crowds. Um, so Jesus sends, sends the disciples away and then begins to, to dismiss the crowds. And then we get to verse 20, 23, where he says, After he had dismissed the crowds, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. And when evening came, he was there alone. So finally... Jesus gets the time that he needs to be alone with God. Sometimes that we forget that while being God, Jesus was also still human. He was fully God and fully human. And as a human, it was just as important for him as it is for us to get the time alone with God. This is an important example for us. You can see many times throughout the Gospels where Jesus gets away to go pray to go be with the Father, to go and just take that time to, to recharge and refresh and hear, hear God's voice and hear his leading where he is to go next. Um, when we are hit with all sorts of things that go wrong, um, the world is in a big moment of everything went wrong, and it's, it's hard to deal with, uh, such as the death of someone close, loss of a job, broken relationships, and so many other situations. And we are trying to get close to God, but there's so many distractions. There's so many things that can come in the way. Um, you know, things keep going. Bills still need to be paid. Kids still need to be fed, the snack monsters. Um, bills still need to be paid. And people around you still need your help. It just Those things just don't go away. Our, our responsibilities don't just go away because something bad has happened around us. But when we look to the example of Jesus, 
we see that he still took the time to have compassion, to deal with the things at hand, to help the 5,000 plus little snack monsters that came. I mean, no biggie, right? You can feed 5,000 people, right? I can't. I can't cook, so that's the problem for me. I mean, it, it would be a miracle if I could feed 5,000 people. But Jesus made sure, as soon as he had the, the, the available time, to get alone with God. He dealt with the things that were right in front of him, and then he went and he prayed. He, he, he took the time to make sure that he was refreshed and filled, with, filled by God. Um, and that is important for us to do as well. Okay, mini connected sermon over, and we'll go back to Jesus on the water. Uh, so verse 24, this thing really wants to jump. 24. Uh, but the boat by this time was a long way off from the land, beaten by the waves, for the wind was against them. And in the fourth watch of the night, which is about three to six in the morning or so, um, he came to them walking on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified and said, it is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them saying, take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. Now if we can imagine for a moment being the disciples. And you're rowing like crazy, trying to fight the wind, fight the waves to get to the other side. You've been going for hours. You are tired. You've been just beaten by the wind and the waves. You're getting worried you're not going to make it to the other side, and you're not sure if the boat will stay afloat. You're not sure if you'll end up somewhere where you don't recognize. There wasn't really GPS back then, so they had reason to be like, okay, I don't know where we're, we're going to be. But then all of a sudden, you see walking on the water this person coming towards you. And honestly, I don't blame the disciples for their reaction. They had a, a bit of a freak out. And it's a ghost. Um, but there wasn't really a rational explanation for what they were seeing. This, had, this is not a common practice, somebody walking on water, right? I've never seen it. I don't know if you have, but they were terrified that this was weird. But then Jesus speaks. The storm isn't gone. The wind is still blowing. They're not out of danger. But Jesus showed up. Right when the disciples needed him, Jesus showed up. He stepped into their situation. When everything was going against them, there he was. He says, take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. And as I was reading and, and preparing for, for talking today, um, I, I found this quote that I thought was, was very interesting. It says, there are two reasons to put away fear. One reason may be that the problem is not nearly as bad as one had thought, and perhaps you are afraid because you exaggerated the danger. The other reason is that even though the problem may be real, there is an even greater solution and help at hand. The danger was very real for the disciples. But the solution was bigger than the danger. The disciples had a legitimate reason to fear. And as, as Pastor Brad pointed out last week, these guys knew what it was to be sailors on the Sea of Galilee. They, they were fishermen. This is what they did. They both knew how to handle a boat and what beginning, what a storm beginning to be too much for them looked like. And that they knew where they were. Uh, but then Jesus shows up in the middle of the storm. In the midst of everything going under, he walks out to them doing the impossible. It's important to note and point out that Jesus hasn't stopped the wind and the waves yet. That comes later. What stands out to me 
Is it just because the storm is still going? It doesn't mean that Jesus isn't right there. The bills still need to be paid. And you don't know how that's going to happen. But Jesus is right there. You're still weighed down in grief. But Jesus is right there. Your heart is still broken. But Jesus is right there. You still wear the shackles and chains of sin and addiction. But Jesus is right there. And as the song Waymaker declares and reminds us that even when I don't see it, you're working. And even when I don't feel it, you're working. Jesus is right there, and he's right here. And then we come to Peter. Brash, bold, full of faith, sometimes doesn't quite get it. Kind of Kind of like us sometimes. And Peter, so Peter answered Jesus, and he says to him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. And Jesus said, come. And Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water and came to Jesus. Could you imagine being the other disciples in that moment? So wait, wait, Peter, what are you, what, uh, no, uh, huh? Okay, all right. Only Peter would think of such a thing to do. Just fits right into his character. What prompted Peter to do such a thing? I have no idea. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> but what we do know is that Jesus said yes. I think... There's a side lesson here that we can learn. I'll let you connect the dots, but if you need a hint, it's something about praying and being bold and doing what Jesus tells you to do. But then, the, then it continues. It says, But when he saw the wind, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. And Jesus immediately reached out his hand and took hold of him, saying to him, O you of little faith, why did you doubt? Again, oh Peter. What a glowing example of human nature. Jesus does this amazing thing, allows him to come and walk on water to be the second person to actually do this thing. And then he sees some wind. He's walking on water and he sees wind? And suddenly, he begins to sink. To me, when I was thinking about this, it reminded me of Elijah. When he defeats the 450 prophets of Baal through God's miraculous intervention, God drops fire on a soaked altar. And then suddenly, the, the queen Jezebel threatens him, and he's like, all right, got to go. Uh, God, if you could just let me die, because you know, whatever. It's this crazy, amazing moment to, God, you just, just let, me, let me die? Or Peter, this, this amazing walking on the water to suddenly sinking because he sees wind. How like us. God does something amazing in our lives and, and then we turn around and forget about it or lose track or whatever that may be. If you read the story about Elijah, God showed up there too. In the midst of, of this great thing, Peter took his eyes off of Jesus. And he feared the little thing. He's walking on water. What does the wind matter? Like, we hear this story so much that we've we kind of become desensitized to the fact that Peter was walking on water and he saw wind and it, well, you don't really see wind, but he saw the effects of wind and began to be afraid. This, 
with that quote that I, I shared a little bit earlier, the two reasons to fear, I think this one falls into the, the first category of exaggerating the problem, whereas the whole situation is, is very much a real danger. But, um, but Jesus was right there. What matters in this situation with Peter is where his eyes were. When Peter's eyes were on Jesus, he, did, he was able to do the miraculous, to walk on water. When Peter took his eyes off of Jesus, he feared and he sank. So Peter, being so much like us, I just often see myself in Peter. Um, he, he does the very thing that we can, we can do in our own lives, is that when we have our eyes focused on Jesus, we can see the amazing things that he is doing, that he is working, that he is changing in our lives. But when we take our eyes off of Jesus, we become overwhelmed by the fear, the grief, the distress, the trouble. In the beginning of all of uh, the pandemic stuff, uh, we were working from home, everything was shut down. Um, I, I struggled a bit with kind of my, men my mental health with depression because all I could see around me was the bad things that were happening. People were dying, people were losing their jobs, everything was shutting down, there was so much uncertainty and everything, all the forecasts were just getting worse. Social media, the news, everything was just weighing so heavily on me and I had no idea what to do with it. But then I had a realization. I realized that I had not picked up my Bible in days, weeks maybe. I hadn't prayed. I was filling my mind with the fear that the world was sharing. And then something clicked. And it was like Jesus was walking out on the water to me. And so I began to realize that my eyes weren't on him at all. That I had shifted my eyes from Jesus to the, the situation around us. And that whole time, he held his hand out to catch me. And I was looking at the wind. So, I turned my eyes to him. I'm not going to say everything was fixed suddenly, but my outlook was better. And slowly over time, my gaze continued to, to stick on Jesus and my look at the situation changed because I was no longer filling my mind with the fear and the, the trouble and the doubt that came from the situation. I was fixing my eyes on Jesus who is bigger than the situation. So getting back to, to the story here, verse 32, when Jesus saves Peter. Come on. There we go. When they got into the boat, or when, yeah, when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. And those in the boat worshipped him, saying, truly you are the Son of God. Only when Jesus got in the boat did the wind stop. This whole situation up to this point, the wind and the waves and the storm was still going. The wind stopped when their eyes were focused on him. In that moment, the disciples had a realization of Jesus' power over the things of nature by walking on the water, by stopping the wind and the waves, but also in his love because he reached out and saved Peter. And the only response that they could come up with was to worship him. And I think that's a pretty appropriate response. Their eyes were fixed on him. 
So I don't know what is going on in your life right now. But allow Jesus to step onto your boat and capture your focus. Allow your eyes to fix on him. So when you fix your eyes on Jesus and let him step into that boat, he will bring provision. He will bring joy. He'll bring life. He'll bring wholeness. And he'll bring freedom. And so much more. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus and not the wind and the waves around us. Let's pray. Lord, we want to encounter you. Jesus, help us to see what you're doing around us and help us to, to shift our focus, shift our eyes to be on you. Lord, let the situation around us fall away and our focus be you. Because you are greater than the storms of life. You are greater than the grief, the sorrow, the, the struggle and the trial and trouble. You are greater. And so, Lord, help us to keep our focus on you. Help remind us of who you are. Remind us of where our eyes need to be so that we can encounter you, so that we can see you, we can see you move and see where you are moving and work with you and partner with you. Lord, we just want, we want to be with you. So Lord, right now, we, we take this moment and we shift our focus to you, Jesus. You are the author and perfecter of our faith. You are the one who we run towards in this life. And so we fix our eyes on you because we know that you are greater. In your name we pray. Amen. Well, we are, are going to take communion together this morning. Um, so if you want to find your little packet around you or um, whatever you have at home, whether it's coffee and a donut or whatever. Um, they're symbols. It's, what's important is that we remember. As I was thinking about communion uh, this morning, I was reminded of a verse in Hebrews uh, chapter 12 um, where he had just walked through so many examples of people who had faith in God without seeing the promises. And they, they chose to have faith anyways. And he says, he says this in verse 1. He says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, the cloud of witnesses is all these people that chose to have faith, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely. Let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Looking to Jesus the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. This morning we're sharing communion together to remember the sacrifice that Jesus made for us on that cross. To remember also that it did not end there. The same Jesus who walked on the waves, who willingly gave his life so that we can have ours. The same Jesus who steps into our boats, into our situations, with his hand extended, he demonstrated his power to save us by raising from the dead. Arising from the dead. This is how we know that he can step into our lives, into our boats, and change our situations. He can change us. That he can call us in the midst of the storm to step out of the boat. And if we keep our eyes on him, we will not sink. The verse in Hebrews just told us to lay aside every weight. And Jesus in Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 also says this. He says to come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, 
For I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Let us take this moment this morning to set our eyes on Jesus. To exchange our heavy burdens for his that are light. Because he has demonstrated his power to change us and our situations. And let him change you, change your situation, change your outlook, change your focus. Use this moment to take your eyes off of the situation around you and fix them solidly on Jesus. I'm going to read from 1 Corinthians 11 this morning. It says, For I received from the Lord what I also deliver to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's eat the bread together. Thank you, Lord. And in the same way, also, he took the cup. The cup after supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let's drink the juice together. And Paul, the writer of of 1 Corinthians, finishes with this. He says, For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, You proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. We proclaim the power that he has in our lives because he has power over death until he comes again. Let's pray. Jesus, we thank you that you have demonstrated your power to change the world in your power over the grave. Lord, we proclaim your death and we look forward to your coming and we look forward to the work that you are doing in us in this moment and continuing to do. Lord, again we pray that we would fix our eyes on you. We would be solidly set on you, Lord. We thank you that you chose us that you chose to give yourself for us. And we worship you this morning. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Well, this morning, if you don't know Jesus, don't know the, the one who can walk on the waves and come out towards you and step into your boat and step into your situation, I or, or Pastor Brad will be so happy to pray with you. And if you're watching online, you can reach out over um, our website or Facebook or anything like that, and reach out to us, and we would just be happy to walk this journey with you, to walk with the, the, the one who is our friend, but also has the power to change our lives. Uh, we are so grateful uh, for what he, is, he has done in us, and, and so, so grateful for you here, and that you chose to watch and, and, and be with us this morning. Um, and so we will, I pray that you would have a, a great week, and, uh, and we will see you again real soon.